Uh, the last story is uh, is a Tulsi Gabbard story. I haven't done a Tulsi story in quite some time. Uh, some of you might know that uh, t- t- you know I, I was I was a little I was a little upset with Tulsi, uh, right? And I feel rightfully so. I <laughs> well, the reason I was upset with Tulsi, and I and I and I did talk about it back in March, is <laughs> because I was an avid supporter of Tulsi Gabbard, and I met her. She was very nice, very genuine person. But then she goes and and endorses Joe Biden, a, a individual that has uh, the opposite belief systems that she does. And it was mind-boggling and very confusing. Um, So, you know, with that in mind, I was very upset and I got to that point, and I I think Graham Elwood talked about this as well, is, look, I, I don't think we should hinge everything on a political candidate, regardless of who that political candidate is. A lot of people uh, were, were, you know, everything hinged on on Bernie Sanders, um, and again, it's like okay, that 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 can be fine, but um, but it doesn't. But no, like don't don't let it hinge on that. It doesn't need to hinge on that one particular person. And that's kind of what I realized with Tulsi. I'm going to support the ideas. I'm going to support the the movements, the people behind everything. But, you know, hinging everything on one political candidate seems a little irresponsible to me. Uh, but, you know, Tulsi's, Tulsi's back in the news. She's she's putting out some, some bills. Uh, I, I honestly don't know what she'd been doing during the COVID. I think she, she said she was kind of trying to be in Hawaii for it to, like, help Hawaii. Uh, and that's cool. That's fine. But uh, anyway, uh, she put out th- th- three bills, three bills, uh, basically going against the Espionage Act and what what we're doing to Julian Assange, what what the United States of America is doing to uh, to Julian Assange here. And, um, you know, the the first portion of the bill is to pardon Edward Snowden. Pardon and drop all charges on Edward Snowden. Um, so that's the first part of the bill. Uh, and that's, yeah, I 100% agree with that. Uh, even the courts agree with that. Like, there's a bunch of courts that were like, yeah, what the NSA did and what the NSA was doing was 100% unconstitutional. And... Uh, you know, so for her to for her to come out and, and make this bill is is huge, and she's got Republican support on on this stuff too. By the way, there are Republicans supporting this stuff. There are Repo- Republicans coming out and saying, "Okay, yeah, we'll back this thing." Huge. That's very large. That's very big. Uh, second one along the same lines here: um, pardon and drop all charges to Julian Assange. And again, no, nah, yeah, duh, fucking, let's do it. I, I look at this point. I feel like anybody that comes out, and especially if you're in the government, and you come out and you're like, "Hey, we, you know, D- D- Julian Assange is a bad guy," and blah blah blah, and we have to keep him in prison, and so on and so forth. You're you're basically now, if you come out against Julian Assange, you you are now an advocate for uh, torturing innocent people and fascism. That's what you're for. Because Julian Assange is being tortured. You know, as Melzer has talked about it. it. You know, I've brought up that. Taylor Hudak has brought up that. The Action for Assange folks have brought this fact up. Dude's being tortured. He's a, he's a suicide risk. And she points out, Tulsi points out in the video that what um, what Snowden and Assange did was for the public interest, for, for the public good. Uh, that's why they revealed the information that they revealed, and um, and that's why they should be they should be praised for it. So, uh, you know, I, I I'm I'm all for that. It's great. The last part, this is where probably where I'll veer away from Tulsi a little bit. 
Um, the last part talks about reforming the Espionage Act. Uh, basically saying that people that reveal information, whistleblowers, will be protected, uh, have the right to be protected if the government decides to take action against them. And that's nice, uh, but why not just abolish the Espionage Act altogether to, to stop protecting people in the government? You know? Why are we protecting war criminals? If, you, if, if somebody reveals that you're committing a war crime, if somebody reveals that you're committing corporate fraud, you're completely fucking over the middle class, you shouldn't be able to use this law. This law shouldn't even be in place, period. Outdated, paranoid, old law. And you have... She brings up Daniel Daniel Ellsberg um, with good reason to bring up Daniel Ellsberg, right? Uh, he, he was one of the first people to be... Well, she says he, he was one of the first people to be put uh, locked up by the Espionage Act. And that is partly true. I think he's the first um, person of journalistic merit to be locked up by the Espionage Act, but I don't think he's the first person. You had Eugene Debs, you had Schenck, you had a lot of anti-war socialists and activists that were uh, uh, locked up because of the Espionage Act. So he's technically not the first person, but Daniel Ellsberg was the first, somebody in a journalistic capacity <clears throat> that was almost locked up. He was pr- prosecuted for it. I say abolish this motherfucking bill. That's what I say. That's what I think needs to happen with it. Uh, the big question is, what's going to happen? I mean, these, this, it's on the floor. It's got Republican, a couple Republicans backing it. Um, is is that enough? Is that enough? You know, will it go through? Will some? Will, will we get a pardoning? You have a bunch of Republicans and Democrats vehemently against this idea. At least she's putting something forward. And, you know, if it gets declined, it'll get declined by the merits of Democrats not getting behind a Democrat. And Republicans not backing Republican backers. The question I have is where's the squad on this, right? Where's AOC and Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib? Uh, I don't. Again, my my relationship is that I don't I don't hate these people. I'm not I'm not going to hate these people. I, but I'm not going to hinge everything that I have on these people. But I want to know where are the rest of the Democrats. Where's Pelosi? Where's uh, Where's Bernie? Bernie hasn't said anything about Assange, which is very disappointing. Where's Joe, Where's Joe Biden and Kamala Harris on this? Where are they at? I don't know where this bill is going to go, if you want my honest opinion. Um, I, I feel like this bill is probably going to stay stagnant. Uh, we may never hear of it again. Because, like, in March, early whenever we were doing lockdown procedures and everything, she put something out for a UBI, and, you know, like, everybody just kind of ignored it until Ilhan Omar started tweeting about a UBI. That's kind of what I think is going to happen with this. Um, I would hope not. I would hope that they actually take this thing seriously and do something about it and do pardon Assange and do pardon Snowden and realize that that is the right thing to do. And what's happening with Julian Assange is actually quite dangerous and uh, and completely fucked and a a show trial and is a violation of of human rights on, on major levels which will then make us look at what the CIA has to say, which will then make us look at how the, Amer- uh, how, how the uh, American military industrial complex gets to act. But all of these things that I just listed is why somebody like Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Mitch McConnell, uh, fucking Lindsey Graham, none of them will fucking go for this. But good on Tulsi for trying. 
Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure you like it. Please make sure you share it. And please make sure you are subscribed to this channel, whether you're watching this on the YouTubes, whether you're watching this on Facebook or uh, or Rockfin, which is the cryptocurrency blockchain platform. It's ad-free and make sure that content creators get paid for the content that they want to make. It's completely uncensored. Whether you're on any of these channels, make sure that you are subscribed and following me for uh, all new video updates. There are uh, videos uh, put up on this channel on a weekly basis, anywhere from four to six videos every single week. Uh, they include uh, news commentary. They include sociopolitical com comedy commentary, uh, rants, uh, current event stuff, interviews, stand-up comedy clips. There's a ton of stuff that's available on this channel. Uh, and if you want to come see one of my live virtual stand-up comedy shows called The Citizen Revolution Live Virtual Stand-Up Comedy Show, you can grab tickets directly off my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, while you're there, you can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets to these shows uh, uh, and a bunch of cool other uh, bonus stand-up comedy clips uh, while you're at it. And... Uh, you, or you can make a one-time donation as well uh, if, if that is something that, that you would like to do, if the sustaining membership is something that you can do. I know we're in tough times right now, uh, but if you can, that'd be awesome. If not, that's cool too. But the big thing to do is make sure that you are liking it, you are sharing this, and you are subscribed to the channel. Till next time, thank you so much, and we'll see you on the road.